Mitt Romney, and I approve this message. You're watching Local 6, home of ClickOrlando.com. Local 6 News starts now. Now at 6, we are learning more about a teacher accused of having sex with a student, including what a chaperone said that prompted an investigation. And President Obama says goodbye to Central Florida after making a quick campaign stop. But first, we have a brand new tropical storm. Good evening, I'm Guard Swanson. And I'm Lisa Bell. In for Lauren Rowe, Ernesto formed just over an hour ago. Let's get the very latest from meteorologist Julie Broughton in for Tom tonight. Hey, Lisa, Ernesto, yeah, upgraded at 5 o'clock from Tropical Depression 5 to Tropical Storm Ernesto. And right now, winds are up to 50 miles per hour. Here is the official track from the National Hurricane Center, and you'll notice the official track does keep this storm well to our south, strengthening it slowly as as it moves through the Caribbean and right now we're looking at the potential of a category one hurricane in the Western Caribbean by early next week with winds possibly at 80 miles per hour by Tuesday. Now a lot of the models are not strengthening it as much as this official track. So I think the intensity as far as the track goes still a little bit iffy. Now what we're watching here locally for you tonight, a little cluster of stronger thunderstorms up in Marion County as we go in a little bit closer on the radar for you. Those of you near the tobacco patch landing down toward Fort McCoy and Burbank you are seeing winds at times gusting up to around 45 to 55 miles per hour. A decent amount of lightning and where you see those areas of orange and red on the radar, that shows us where we are looking at the potential of one to two inches of rain falling per hour as all of this tracks off to the east affecting areas over the Ocala National Forest. We will talk more about the potential of more thunderstorms heading our way tonight. Now, also let you know what is in the tropics that will be affecting our weather this weekend. That's all coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thanks, Julie. And remember, you can always see the latest track of the storm with our new Just Weather Hurricane app. You can download it on your iPhone, iPad, or Android device. Our other big story tonight, the race for the White House. In just the last half hour, President Obama left Central Florida, and there goes Air Force One climbing into the air after a very quick campaign stop here in Orlando. The president spoke at Rollins College and made a surprise visit to a Dominican restaurant. Local 6 has team coverage tonight, starting with Tony Pipitone live at Rollins College, where thousands of supporters gathered for this afternoon's rally. Tony? Yeah, 2,400 adoring fans, I would call them, who jammed into that gymnasium back there. Now, these are the true believers, volunteers, labor, teacher, and just plain citizens who wanted to cheer their president. But in an economy that is, there has been not been much to cheer about, so President Obama was trying to dish out hope for the future. They chanted four more years. Even sang him happy birthday two days early. So President Obama knew he was speaking to the converted. His message really intended for the independents and moderates who might be watching now at home. This is a choice about two fundamentally different visions for America. You are the tiebreaker. And with 29 electoral votes, Florida could certainly swing the election. So we reminded them of what he inherited. The worst economic crisis of our lifetimes. A crisis that robbed too many of our friends and neighbors of jobs and their homes and their savings. And the president painted his opponent, Mitt Romney, as offering more of the same. Tax cuts and deregulation that created the financial and budget crises. They have tried to sell us this trickle down tax cut fairy dust before. <laughs> and, and, and guess what? It didn't work then. It will not work now. But with sluggish growth and high unemployment on his own watch, he tried to look not in the immediate past, but, well, everyone got the message. I've seen your resilience. I've seen folks get knocked down and get right back up. You are tougher than tough times. And it was hard, of course, to find a naysayer in this crowd. Are you disappointed at all that things haven't turned around more in the economy than, than you may have hoped four years ago? Um, actually, things have turned around as much as I've expected and a little bit more. You know, I posed that question about the rough economy to three different people in there, and they all came up with similar answers that it wasn't easy to get out of the economic calamity of 2008, that he needs more time to finish the job. Lisa? All right. Thanks, Tony. 
The president also made a surprise stop at a Dominican restaurant this afternoon. Local 6's Kristen Giannis is live at the restaurant on Cimarron Boulevard. And Kristen, I have to, I guess the most obvious question, what did the president order today for lunch? Guard, I have that right here. He ordered some yellow rice, pork, roasted pork, and some tostones. He was here for about 30 minutes. He, everyone in the restaurant was asked to stay inside. No one could come in or out. The president ordered some food, and then he went around to each table, took his time. He talked to all the people here. He took pictures. Now, a uh, camp next door at a church next door heard the commotion, and the kids came running out. About 55 kids also got to meet the president. He was like awesome, like because when I when I met him, I didn't know he was gonna be so tall. Now I'm here with the owner Rafael Vasquez. Now this must have been an awesome experience. What did the president say to you? <laughs> it, was, it is very awesome. The president said that he heard about my food. And uh, he he came to try. Say he's gonna want to, he want to try my food. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And you're probably very proud because you cook all this food yourself. Yes, I do it myself, and I'm very very happy that he came here and tried, um, you know, my food. And um, and I heard, um, I'm very happy that he was here. Very I'm excited. very excited about Thank it. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you. Guard, Lisa. That's funny. You talk about a rousing endorsement. You get it from the, the president. Now, that's word of mouth, right, if it comes from him. Now, did the president, did he actually sit down or did he take it on the go? Because we all know he has a pretty busy schedule. Yeah, Raphael, did he sit down or did he take it to go? He take it to go. He ordered three plates and he took it to go. Three yeah. plates, all yeah. for him or? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure, but he told me, fill me three plates and I'm going to take it. Oh, uh, okay. Because um, he spent much time talking to the people that were sitting here in the restaurant. So awesome. he don't have the time to eat it in here. So awesome. he took it Maybe he took on the, in a limo ride there. Maybe, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Back You're to you. You're welcome. All right, yeah. Oh, that, that owner right there, he's downright giddy over that. I would too with the president oh, showing yeah. up. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Kristen. And before the president made it to town, Mitt Romney's camp was already on the campaign trail with the man who might be his running mate. Florida Senator Marco Rubio took center stage at an event this morning in Orlando. Local 6's Nick Manzant was there. Well, as you can see, the stage isn't nearly as big as the president's, and there weren't as many people here. But when Marco Rubio spoke at this business in support of Mitt Romney, there was still a lot of people paying extra close attention. This morning, Senator Marco Rubio took the stage, and just a few hours before President Obama spoke to thousands in Winter Park, Rubio told the crowd, "Thank you the for coming so early in the morning and being go. a part of this. Things will never get better under Barack Obama because he doesn't understand what made us great." In a nearly 30-minute speech, Rubio, who is campaigning for Mitt Romney, outlined why he believes Romney should be the next president of the United States. It's because Rubio says Obama wants big government, big spending, and lots of business regulation while Romney wants less spending and a smaller government. This is a choice between remaining exceptional or becoming like the rest of the world, and we will not become like the rest of the world. Thank you. After his speech, Rubio gathered with supporters who took pictures with the man some want to be the next vice president. I would absolutely support Romney Rubio ticket, yes. Speculation about just such a ticket has swirled but Rubio would only say, I don't talk about the vice presidential process, guys. Now, Rubio said he didn't have any immediate events planned, but he also said that he would definitely speak again in favor of Mitt Romney. In Orlando, Nick Vinzant, Local 6. Thanks, Nick, and count on Local 6 for complete coverage of the presidential race and all elections on the air and on ClickOrlando.com. New at 6, we're learning more about what led to the arrest of a former Brevard County drama teacher. Yeah, Dennis Turner taught at Edgewood Junior Senior High School in Merritt Island. He's accused of having sex with a student. Detectives started investigating when parents complained about his behavior to school officials. And late this afternoon, our news partners at Florida Today obtained those complaints. Local 6's Sean Chayabat takes a closer look. The complaint was filed by a chaperone after a student trip in March. In the complaint obtained by our news partners at Florida Today, a chaperone claims Turner lounged on a hotel bed with a female student, rubbed the backs of high school girls, and guessed what types of underwear students wore. 
According to other complaints, Turner allegedly let girls into his hotel room past curfew, rubbed the backs of female students, and told chaperones he could tell students apart by the size of their breasts. According to a statement in his file, Turner said he was never in a room alone with students without the door being wide open. And according to a letter written by Edgewood's principal, when confronted about what happened on the trip, Turner apologized and said, quote, I screwed up and I did this to myself. Sean Chiavot, Local 6. And Turner is facing 126 counts of sexual battery. We checked tonight and he is still being held in the Brevard County Jail. Good news for the Space Coast economy. Governor Rick Scott today announced that new jobs are coming to Cape Canaveral. The jobs are for a new submarine missile system testing facility at the Air Force Station, adding about 100 new jobs. The station will refurbish and update a 1950s era submarine missile test complex. Construction is scheduled to begin later this year and be completed in the year of 2015. Well, now you will be able to take a tour of the Kennedy Space Center without even leaving your house in five minutes will tell you where you'll be able to do that and where it will take you. Julie. I'm tracking our fifth tropical storm of the season. Coming up, I'll let you know how strong Ernesto is right now, and I'll also show you what's heading our way for the weekend. Nicole. I'm Nicole Pasecki in Volusia County. How a Daytona Cubs intern was ejected from last night's game without even saying a word. That story is next. Here's tonight's lineup on Local 6, sponsored by Bright House. At 8, The Big Bang Theory. 8.30, Two and a Half Men. At 9, Big Brother. At 10, Person of Interest. Followed by Local 6 News at 11. The Lazy Boy Inventory Overstock Sell-Off. On now, only at the Lazy Boy Furniture Gallery's dealer in Orlando. As an athlete, you're training your whole life for that one moment at the Olympics. But America's Winter Olympics were mired in scandal and deficits. They turned to Mitt Romney. He faced a $400 million budget deficit and turned that around to a $100 million surplus. And after September 11th, Romney delivered the Olympics safe and secure. Mitt gets things done. He changed my life. Mitt Romney brought a huge sense of hope. And that allowed athletes like myself to be able to realize our dreams. Restore our future is responsible for the content of this message. You need tires, and you want a deal. You want great tires for less. Boy, have we got a deal for you. Free tires. Yeah, you heard right. Free tires. At Tire Kingdom right now, buy one select name brand tire, get your second tire free. Buy two tires, get two tires free. Plus, charge it on a Service Central credit card and get $75 back. A free tire with every tire you buy. Now at Tire Kingdom. Why in the world would you shop anyplace else? For one final week, Ashley Furniture Home Stores from coast to coast are holding their national sale and clearance. $500 million in furniture at unbelievable prices. Find savings of up to 70% off. Sofas starting at only $299. Beds from an incredible $249. And five-piece dining room start at just $299. Hurry in for unbelievable savings. To wait, the national sale and clearance ends Monday. Ashley Furniture Home Store, the number one name in furniture. I've never felt this way before, but it's a scary time to be a woman. Mitt Romney is just so out of touch. Mitt Romney opposes requiring insurance coverage for contraception, and Romney supports overturning Roe versus Wade. Romney backed a bill that outlaws all abortion, even in cases of rape and incest. There's so much we need to do. We need to attack our problems, not a woman's choice. I'm Barack Obama, and I approve this message. Well, this video has gone viral. The umpire at a Daytona Cubs baseball game threw out the DJ after he played the Three Blind Mice song. The DJ played the song after a close play that went against the Cubs. Yeah, Local 6's Nicole Pasecki actually talked to that DJ tonight, and she's live in Daytona Beach. And I guess, what is this DJ saying about this? This, this thing's gone viral. It's exploded across the country. Yeah, he's really a big deal now. He tells me, though, that he was surprised to get booted out of the game last night, that the song was harmless, it was innocent fun. He also says his decision helped this team fans rally to help this team lead them to a win. 
doesn't take long for the umpire to react to that tune. Turn the sound off the rest of the night. Wow. Never mind. Derek Dye was just ejected from the game. Derek, Derek Dye was ejected from the game. That is awesome. This is Derek Dye, a 21-year-old intern with the Daytona Beach Cubs and the man working as a DJ at last night's game. But the umpire at first uh, said there was a bobble and he never had possession of the ball. He called him safe. Dye says the ump made a bad call, so he made the call to play three blind mice. He pointed directly at me and then directed me out, so I, I knew I'd like, made the wrong song. I, it was funny, though. a lot of teams play it. The umpire also ordered the stadium's PA system to be shut down for the rest of the game. Dye says the decision got fans riled up, helping the Cubs score a win out of the night. It's probably the loudest crowd I've heard all year, and it wasn't like a, a too big of a crowd, so the whole, they really rallied together. Dye has become an overnight sensation after the ejection, appearing on major networks, even making his debut on SportsCenter. Do you regret playing that song? No, I would play that song in that situation probably every time. That is unbelievable! Derek Dye, ladies and gentlemen. And the same umpire will be working out in the field at tonight's game, so we'll have to see if he has any issues with the music that's played tonight. Guard? All right, so what about the song? I know he said he would play it again. Where is the song? What are they going to do with it? Yeah, he said he would play it again, but it has been retired from uh, this stadium, so you won't be hearing it anytime soon here. All right, Nicole Pasecki reporting live. Maybe they could play Hit Me With Your Best Shot. <laughs> Pat Benatar, I think that's who it was. All right, we've got a lot of hits on our Facebook page. This is Wendy Pascarella. She says the umpire should grow a backbone. No sense of humor there. LOL, laugh out loud. <laughs> Wow. I agree with Wendy. I mean, I do too. Seriously. I've been to a lot of baseball parks, minor league parks, where I started my career, my TV career, yeah. and they play that song you all the time. You always hear that. Yes. Why was he so sensitive? I don't know. Rough just having, the ump's having a bad day. <laughs> all right. All right. Soon you'll be able to experience all the history at the Kennedy Space Center right from the comfort of your own home. Yeah, that's because the Space Center is partnering with Google to give virtual tours of KSC. The project comes as part of the center's 50th anniversary as an independent space center. The virtual tours will include the Vehicle Assembly Building and other historic space flight landmarks. To see the new images, go to ClickOrlando.com, click on Scene on 6, and you'll find a link to those pictures under Thursday Stories. Pretty cool. That is. I always like the, when they speed it up. You can get through <laughs> yeah. stuff so fast when they do exactly. it like that. All right, coming up tonight at 7, a warning about an email scheme that may be resurfacing here in Central Florida. In fact, I received one, and I'm going to show you this story coming up. It's part of our schemes and ripoffs this week. It is a big ripoff, folks. You've got to tune in for that. Plus, a bear caught on camera walking right up to the doors of one condo complex. Those stories all new tonight at 7 o'clock. And tonight at 11, if an airline does not fly, is it an airline? Local 6 is digging deeper into a story about a so-called travel club and the way it markets its products. Consumer editor Stephen Cooper connects the dots and brings us the next edition of his Travel Truth Investigation. That is tonight at 11. Oh, yeah, yeah. And also tonight, you might want to grab a Powerball ticket if you haven't already done so. No one won last night. That means the jackpot is now $181 million and will probably climb. The drawing is Saturday at 10.59. And, of course, you can watch us at 11 o'clock right here on Local 6. Yeah, and Julie will have the very latest yes. on Ernesto. And, and you've been yeah. busy. Wow. Yeah. yeah, we've been busy. Of course, Tropical Depression 5, as you probably know by now. Now a tropical storm named Ernesto. And what happened, the hurricane hunters flew in this afternoon. And on their flight, they went in and checked it out. And they did find at flight level on the northern side of that center of circulation some pretty strong gusty winds. So even though the satellite imagery with this system still not all that impressive, they did find winds, maximum sustained winds at 50 miles per hour. So did upgrade it to a tropical storm. Gusts are up to 55 miles per hour and Ernesto still just flying, moving off to the west at 22 miles per hour. And it's about 2,000 miles east southeast of Orlando. And it looks like it will likely stay well to the south of the state of Florida. Here is that official track for you that came out at five o'clock. 
taking it quickly through the Lesser Antilles during the day tomorrow with winds still around 50 miles per hour. Now right now the system has a lot of dry air wrapping around into it and a decent amount of upper level shear so we do think strengthening will be pretty slow. By 2 o'clock Saturday afternoon we're looking at 60 mile per hour winds potentially as it continues moving off to the west. Toward the end of the forecast period we think a little weakness in a ridge of high pressure will allow it to go a little bit more to the northwest and right now the National Hurricane Center does put it at a category one hurricane by Tuesday with winds at 80 miles per hour. Now this is kind of the fly in the ointment with this forecast. A lot of the models are not bringing it up to this intensity so I really do think that there's a good chance that this will not become a hurricane but for now that is the thinking by the National Hurricane Center. Here is the satellite imagery. You can see still a little bit ragged on satellite imagery because of that upper level shear and that drier air but it is moving off to the west. Now at this point we don't think Ernesto will affect our weather but heading up into the Caribbean. Notice this area of clouds. This is a tropical wave, tropical moisture riding to the north. That is expected to track into our area late Saturday into Sunday. That will increase our chance of rain. Now for today, just a few isolated showers out there. Most of us are dry, but as we zip into Marion County, you're seeing some light showers tracking toward Fort McCoy, and those really have lost a lot of intensity even just over the last half hour. 91 degrees right now in Orlando, but it feels like 99. Your clouds and radar forecast. A few isolated showers not out of the question for the rest of the evening. Overnight we'll see our skies clearing and then tomorrow we start the day. Plenty of sunshine. Expect some isolated showers as we move through the afternoon hours tomorrow. So for tonight we'll see an overnight low of 75 with light winds from the south. Now your hour by hour forecast for tomorrow. Your forecast brought to you by Positive Hits Z88.3. Start the day muggy at 78 degrees by noon up to 90 on our way to an eventual high of 95 degrees. Chance of rain tomorrow will be at 30%, but again, that tropical wave heads our way this weekend, bumping that chance of rain up Saturday and Sunday to 50% before we slowly dry back out by Monday. Just in time to head back to work. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Well, our, I'll be there Saturday. Thanks, Julie. Yeah, and the weekend does look a little wet. Yeah. Yes. All right. Thank you, Julie. All right, Sports Director David Pingalore, he's going to be live in just three minutes. He's out at the UCF Media Day. After the break, he'll talk about the Knights and the Buccaneers starting training camp. Sandy Adams talks about reducing the deficit. Given the chance, she failed us. Six times she voted against cutting the skyrocketing budget. Not once or twice, but six times. Sandy Adams even voted against cutting the budget 1%. Thankfully, John Micah voted for those budget cuts every time. The difference is clear. John Micah's a conservative who takes action. Sandy Adams just talks. I'm John Micah, and I approve this message. I am making a fresh cut fruit salad. I hand select the fruit, cut it myself, right here every day, just for you. Cantaloupe, watermelon, honeydew, pineapple, my favorite, grapes, and strawberries. It's an edible rainbow, and I get it all ready for you so you don't have to do any other work. You just enjoy every bite, sweet, juicy, fresh. I hear it makes one sweet rainbow kebab. Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. If you've been successful, you didn't get there on your own. Just if you got a business, that you didn't build that. Somebody else made that happen. My father's hands didn't build this company. My hands didn't build this company. Through hard work and a little bit of luck, we built this business. Why are you demonizing us for it? It's time we had somebody who believes in us. Someone who believes that achievement should be rewarded, not punished. We need somebody who believes in America. I'm Mitt Romney, and I approve this message. For one final week, Ashley Furniture Home Stores from coast to coast are holding their national sale and clearance. $500 million in furniture at unbelievable prices. Find savings of up to 70% off. Sofas starting at only $2.99. Beds from an incredible $2.49. And five-piece dining rooms start at just $2.99. Hurry in for unbelievable savings. To wait, the national sale and clearance ends Monday. Ashley Furniture Home Store, the number one name in furniture. Good evening. 
This is the worst economic recovery America has ever had. 41 straight months of unemployment over 8%. Almost 4 million fewer jobs than President Obama predicted. 23 million Americans without full-time work. The results of President Obama's failed stimulus policies. The worst economic recovery America has ever had. Tell him, for real job growth, stop spending and cut the debt. Support the New Majority Agenda at newmajorityagenda.org. Need to find out now? Now, if those storms are coming your way, just go to clickorlando.com. Our live interactive radar lets you track storms right down to where you live instantly. Keep ahead of the storms with Local 6 and clickorlando.com. All right, Ping out at UCF. Uh, Ping, how is it out there? Are they still a little upset after that bad news earlier this week? Nah, they're they're pretty much uh, done with the bad news. It's this is all about football now. You can see some of the team here, uh, the Knights uh, training camp uh, underway yesterday. This weekend, UCF will uh, put on the pads and start hitting guys. But uh, these young men right here coming back uh, from dinner and uh, looks like uh, they had a, obviously a long day workout. But we're out here because today was media day for these Knights and uh, obviously getting ready for this upcoming season. And they're supposed to do some big things this year. Many people think they're going to win Conference USA. Coach O'Leary and I kind of getting into the mix a little bit, having a little conversation about uh, what he expects this season, and he knows he has a pretty good quarterback coming back in Blake Bortles. Are you ready for this year? That that is the question. I mean, you're you're the man, you know. Yes, sir. I think uh, I think we're all ready for this year to begin. You know, we just started preseason, and uh, we're trying to uh, get back in the groove of things and uh, just get this this the season on uh, on a roll and get ready to play. It should be a big year for UCF. And speaking of some college football, before we talk about the Buccaneers, the uh, preseason college football coaches poll was put out today. Number one is LSU. Number two is Bama. Florida State, number seven, the Florida Gators holding media day today. We'll hear from them tonight, 11 o'clock. They come in number 23. UCF getting some votes in the top 25, but not in there as of yet. So we'll see how the season progresses for the night. Speaking of football, let's talk about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I was over there this morning and meeting and uh, greeting some of the new Buccaneers. Met with uh, the new head coach, Greg Schiano, just for a little bit there after practice. Seems like a good guy. Says everything is uh, pretty much on par to this point. I did ask him about uh, the difference between coaching in college when he was at Rutgers and the Bucs. He says, not much. I don't yell as much. Nonetheless, Dallas Clark, the new tight end, came over to Tampa Bay. Used to play with the Colts with Peyton Manning. He's ready for the season. We got ridiculous talent and uh, great coaching staff, and and so it's just kind of getting everyone on the same page and and going the same direction. And uh, but if we do that, it, good things are going to happen. All right, uh, so let's go back to college football just for a second. Gene Deckerhoff, he is the voice of the Florida State Seminoles and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Always a great guy to talk to. So today, I did get his perspective on uh, Jimbo Fisher, the head coach of Florida State, releasing Greg Reed yesterday got a tremendous future ahead. He's, on, he's, he's got God-given talents, you know, and it's it's tough returning punts at any level, and he, he does it about as well. If, what's it, what, 300 yards away from Dion's record? So, uh, yeah, uh, FSU will survive. Uh, I hope Greg... Uh, uh, has learned from his experience and he'll 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 play somewhere and he'll finish his college career and somebody's going to draft him in the NFL. Tough loss for uh, Florida State for sure going forward. But tonight, the Central Florida Q&A craze ping pong with the voice of the Bucks and the Knowles, Gene Deckerhoff. That's how he talks. I'm just, you know, love Gino. But we'll also hear from uh, head coach Will Muschamp of the Gators. They did have media day today, and Jamie Say was up in Gainesville. So a, a very busy day, guys. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what we were very saying. Busy. You were busy today. You are busy, and now you look all hot and sweaty. Uh, well, of course I am. It's hot out here. What do you want? I know. All right, come on. Sorry, Ping. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> when we come back, we'll have a final look at your weather. And, uh... This fall... How do you guess things? I don't guess. I observe. Sherlock Holmes... And once I've observed, I deduce... ...is back. She's in the safe room. What safe room? One behind that wall. <gasps> Sometimes I hate it when I'm right. We could take it from here. Respectfully, I doubt that very much. You are so full of it. Better. Bill Nelson, a deciding vote for government-mandated health care, which will cost taxpayers over $1 trillion and could disrupt coverage for millions. It would not be law today without...
Bill Nelson. Under the health care law, senior citizens across Florida may see their Medicare Advantage benefits reduced. And it is a fact. Nelson's vote means $500 billion in cuts to Medicare. Florida can't afford Bill Nelson in Washington. The U.S. Chamber is responsible for the content of this advertising. I was driving home from work. I get this phone call. And they said, we got the results. And it is cancer. Now there are expanded treatment options for cancer patients like Audrey as Cancer Treatment Centers of America opens its newest hospital in Metro Atlanta on August 15th. With a focus on treating complex and advanced stage cancer, we offer the unique combination of advanced medical technology, naturopathic, nutritional, and mind-body therapy in a personalized treatment plan all under one roof. That's why we have a 99% patient satisfaction rating. My doctors were absolutely wonderful. It wasn't the cookie-cutter scenario. They, they talked to you about what the options were. They, they gave you options. That's huge. Cancer Treatment Centers of America. Care that never quits. Opening August 15th in Atlanta. Call or visit CancerCenter.com. Appointments available now. This is the last weekend to take advantage of the Rooms to Go Summer Sale. And here's the story. You'll find incredible savings in every department. Summer Sale reductions on our unbeatable room packages. Save big on special clearance buys. But when they're gone, they're gone. So hurry in. There's even interest-free financing. It's basically the perfect buying opportunity. So don't wait. Shop the Rooms to Go Summer Sale before it ends at 9 p.m. Monday. We'll keep a few isolated showers around for the rest of the evening. Then tomorrow, not looking bad, other than it will be hot. We go up to 95 degrees, just a few isolated showers. Tropical wave brings a higher chance of rain for the weekend. Of course, we're tracking Ernesto, and I'll have the latest at that on Sunday. All right. All right. Thanks, Thanks a lot, Julie. Julie. All right, we'll be back at 7 o'clock with more local news. CBS Evening News with Scott Pelley starts right now. We'll see you in a bit. Tonight, the peacemaker calls it quits. The U.S.